Everyone's obsessed with stacking peptides. The Wolverine stack, the Glow stack, the Clo stack. But what actually happens when you stack multiple peptides in the body? Do you know? Let's think like scientists here, not supplement junkies. You see, I'm a doctor, a real one. And I like peptides a lot. And people start rapid firing peptides at me when they find that out. BBC, TV, MOTC, CJC, what do you think about it? Well, first off, I think peptides aren't for human consumption, they're for research purposes only. But hypothetically, if you stacked them in the body, what would happen? Let's think about it. Okay, every peptide is designed to react with a receptor. And keep in mind, receptors can only handle so much. You know, that's why something like epithalin, the telomere lengthening peptide, might knock you out for three days in a row with good sleep, and then all of a sudden you're up at 3 a.m. again, and again, and again, and again. That's probably receptor desensitization. So anyway, let's build something out systemically. Today I'm gonna to talk about a very specific set of stacks that build on one another. And in future videos, I'll do some more. Today we're going to focus more on recovery and inflammation. So let's start where almost everybody starts with peptides, the so-called Wolverine stack, even if you don't know that's what it's called. BPC-157 combined with TB-500. Some people swear by this stack like it's magical. Others, me included, feel nothing. And honestly, that's probably because it's meant more for acute injuries rather than chronic ones. And I'm just somebody who's been crossfitting for nine years and should probably stop. All right, BPC-157. You can think of it as like a local architect. It's a stable gastric pentadecapeptide that speeds up new blood vessel growth and repair. Think of your cells as like construction workers. And when tissue in the body gets damaged, it sends out a signal called VEGF. It's basically a we need new blood vessels work order. Now BPC-157 tells your cells to put up extra antennas called VEGFR2 receptors so that they can hear that original VEGF work order and be more sensitive to it and go to that signal to instantly start building. BPC-157 also boosts nitric oxide signaling, widening blood vessels and flooding an injury site with more oxygen and nutrients. And so that's why it's been studied for tendon and ligament and gut repair. TB-500 is kind of like a cellular foreman. Theoretically, if you add TB-500, a thymosin beta fragment, thymosin beta is a naturally occurring peptide found in injured tissues, but TB-500 is the part of it that actively controls actin sequestering. Basically, it controls actin. Actin is kind of like the scaffolding that allows your cells to rebuild and repair. Now by stockpiling actin and releasing it when it's needed, TB500 helps healing cells migrate faster and stimulates new blood vessel formation. So BPC-157 is like the architect and TB500 is like the foreman sending in the construction crew. Now, putting on my doctor cap here, it's interesting to think about because both of these peptides essentially drive angiogenesis, the formation of new blood vessels, just from different entry points. And that's where the synergy probably is happening. But if you overdo it, are you saturating receptors and suppressing feedback? I mean, nobody really knows, but it's still fascinating and people swear by it. Sometimes you gotta go with what you know. All right, there's another stack that includes BPC-157 and TB-500 and adds GHK copper to it. So you take the Wolverine stack and you basically make him glow. Why would you do this? Okay, GHK copper is basically a copper delivery peptide. So GHK, it carries copper into the cells where it powers enzymes to cross-link collagen and elastin. And that's what gives tissue its strength and elasticity. It also tells the body to break down stiff scar-like collagen and rebuild it better with healthy new fibers. Basically, it remodels the construction site so your new tissue looks and functions better. And it flips on thousands of repair-related genes while calming inflammation. So why this blend makes sense. Okay, BPC-157, blood supply. TB-500, cell migration. GHK copper, structural rebuild. Together, they hit the trifecta. Supply, mobilize, remodel. And just as a side note, if people are injecting this stuff and they think some is good and so more must be better, just be aware that copper toxicity is a thing. It's not common, but it's a thing. There, I said it. All right, what if you add just one more piece to this nice little blend, KPV? That's when the glow stack becomes the clo stack, which doesn't have as nice of a ring to it, but whatever. 
Okay, so KPV is a fragment of a hormone called alpha MSH, one of the body's strongest natural anti-inflammatory hormones. It shuts down two major pro-inflammatory pathways, NF-kappa B and MAPK or MAPK, basically cutting down the storm that can keep tissue irritated. It also helps restore gut lining integrity and even shows antimicrobial and antifungal properties in research models. So theoretically, you're not just rebuilding tissue, you're calming the environment it's trying to heal on. When you put these four together, BPC-157, TB-500, GHK copper, and KPV, you get a theoretical full spectrum repair system. BPC-157 opens up the highways, TB-500 moves in the construction crews, GHK copper remodels the whole system, makes it beautiful, and KPV keeps the dust settled down. That's the theory. It's elegant, it's exciting, and it's still research. But anyway, next time somebody lists off a bunch of peptides they're considering all jamming into their bodies, it's fun to think about, and hopefully you learned something here. Every peptide has a purpose, some of these purposes are synergistic, and if you think about it and you learn about it, it starts to make sense when you know what everything's doing. If you like this breakdown, hit like for me and please subscribe to my channel. I'm going to do some more videos on more popular stacks in the peptide world. And as always, if you have any experience with the research on these things, please put them in my comments. I'm Dr. Ashley Frazee. I am not a peptide coach. I do know a couple of peptide coaches, so I'll put their links in the description. I run a direct primary care clinic in Mesa, Arizona. It's just where I don't take insurance so that I can have more time with people and focus on what really matters to them. Until next time, stay curious, stay skeptical, and uh, be careful, guys. <laughs> Have the best day.